what's up guys welcome to the second video in the series where i'm going to show you how to create a custom id map now id maps are really helpful because it allows you to isolate specific areas within a model or within a mesh to assign uh, the different material or basically to create a change in material really easy so let's go ahead and jump straight into it all right so this is roughly where we left off um and i just want to show you in case uh, you missed the previous video that all i have is just a series of folders with masks right and each folder has a single a uh, fill layer with different properties, right? So the, the green plastic is not going to be metallic compared to, let's say, the metal that is going to be full metallic, but that's it. They're really, really simple, and the, the masks that I'm using are essentially to isolate the areas. So if I press the Alt key to access that mask, you see I'm going to click Alt and click on all of the masks so you can see that's pretty much all I'm doing. Now, this is very easy because everything in this mesh is a separate object. So let me just jump into ZBrush. I showed this at the, at the end of the, the last video, uh, but I just wanna reiterate. So this is the final asset in ZBrush, but if I select this other subtool, this is what I've created. I exploded that mesh so that I can do the bakes and have like some clean um, bakes out of this one. Um, and then I just use the final asset in Painter, right? But the point is that because I have all of these as separate objects, so in other words, there's no continuity in the topology, um, when I select things in Painter using this tool, the Polygon Fill, is this going to allow me to select the entire object, right? So for instance, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, not this one, let's select the Paint layer. So this one right here. All right, so this is a good example. So because it is a single mesh, this section, so you see this uh, section right here and this section and this section, so there are actually three objects. Um, those make up this section right here. So because there are three objects, all I need to do is click on those three things and then I'll have a mask, right? So let me give you an example of this. Go ahead and create a, a red layer here. I'm gonna do a black mask and a paint layer and I'm gonna select this tool, polygon fill, right? So if I have the polygon fill selected and I click on this one, you see I'm selecting this entire object. Same thing for this, which is this object right here and then this one right here, right? So it is very easy because it just selects everything. However, what happens if for whatever reason in your design, you decide to have maybe like a panel in this area with a slightly different material, right? You can do that manually. So you can create another layer. Um, let's make this one a, a metallic layer just for the sake of demo, create a black mask, create a paint layer, and then you can literally use the paint here. And I'm gonna switch to a different brush. Let's expand this a little bit and click on brushes. And I'm gonna click on the, this hard brush, right? So I'm gonna hold control and right click. Again, all of those controllers are mapped to my Cintiq and I can just go ahead and do something like this. Obviously, this is very, very rough. I wouldn't advise doing it like this unless you wanna have this sort of style, but um, this is very quick, right? So you can totally do that, uh, but then, then if you decide to, oh, maybe I wanna have a different material, right? And in this area, or you wanna change things in this material, you can create a folder and do that map or that mask in that folder. And you can also use anchor points, but I'm not gonna go into all the complexity of that. I just wanna show you a, a, a rather simple technique that you can use from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and remove that and ignore that for a second and actually remove the black mask. So remove mask, right? So if I wanna have that, you can do that from the, the bakes or from the ID maps, which is the idea of this video. So let's go ahead into solo mode here. Now, if I enable polyframe, right now I have a single polyframe or a single polygroup idea. But in ZBrush within the tool palette, so this is the tool palette, I can go all the way down to polygroup and expand that. And you see, I have this auto group. So this auto group feature or tool, if you click on it, is going to analyze the mesh and anything that is separate in terms of the poly that has no continuity is going to assign a single color or a single polygon ID. So this is super handy stuff, right? You can click again, if you don't like the colors, it's just gonna go through the process of assigning new colors. So let's go ahead and go with this. Now, this is pure polypaint. In, in other words, it's just a vertex color. But because Painter works with maps, we need to convert this information into a map that we can export. So all we need to do is, now that we have um, this open here, let's go down to polypaint. I'm gonna hold the shift key and open that up. So I have polygroups and I have polypaint. So in polypaint, I have this option that says polypaint from polygroups. So if I click on this one, Zebra is going to take that uh, polygon ID information and actually bake that into the vertex color. So now we have color. So if I turn off the polyframe, you see there's barely any difference because now this is paint. So I have the paintbrush that comes with zero selected. So if I go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and reduce that, use a yellow color and do this, you see that I'm just painting with that color, right? So pretty cool stuff. So here is where the custom ID uh, map come into play because uh, as it is right now, you can just go ahead and export this ID map. However, because I have all these objects separately, it is kind of like pointless. There's no 
like I can use the ID map or I can just use the tool to select different um, polygons or select different ob objects. So going back to the example that I just gave you, so what you can do is you can paint this section right here and add a separate material. So one thing we can do is I want to use the, the lasso uh, masking tool. To, let's go ahead and do, you can do this a little bit better than me. So I'm going to mask this out, invert that mask, and let's just go ahead and mask out what we don't, we don't need. This is not this, the most straight line possible, but um, you, know, you can use other tools to mask this out a little bit cleaner. For instance, if you press the control key, uh, you can select the mask curve, and then that allows you to create a cleaner line, and whatever is on the shaded side of this line is going to be masked out. So you can use these tools um, just for the sake of demo. Uh, I'm, I'm just using simple tools to, to give you an example. Uh, and this is not about ZBrush anyway. Just wanted to, to show you how easy this is. All right, so once I have the area that I want to paint on, um, and actually, I want to make sure that I don't paint inside this area. All right, so I'm going to use a yellow color or something that has a lot of contrast with that pink color. And I'm just going to paint like so. And I'm using symmetry, so on the other side is the same. All right, let's clear that out. So you can go ahead and do the same thing. Let's say if you have like a, like a logo or uh, you can just bring in like an alpha, for instance. So let me just give you that example as well. So with the paintbrush, I'm going to go to the alpha, click on this alpha thumbnail, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use this arrow, right? Something like this. And I'm going to put that arrow around here. In fact, let's just change the focal shift. And oops, let's also change the stroke type to drag rect. And I'm going to click and drag. And let's say that this is an arrow for whatever reason, right? Um, but I'm just literally painted with color. So you can paint the details that you want. And you could potentially, if you have the time and you want to do it, uh, paint some damage, right? So if I, uh, let's use a green, a dark green color, and let's reset that. So let's say that there's going to be some damage that you know is going to be around here. You can start like painting damage. And if you're familiar with, uh, with ZBrush, you, you might be more comfortable just doing these type of things in here. However, all of this stuff is a lot more powerful, I, I think, in Painter. But I just want to give you the, the tools, right? So let's say that you are painting the damage like so. You just need to make sure that it has enough contrast between the colors that you're painting on. So if you use this green color to paint maybe around here, it's going to be uh, a bit difficult. Anyway, once you finish painting your ID map and you're defining kind of like your materials and your sections of the materials within uh, ZBrush or something similar, it doesn't have to be ZBrush. You can use Blender as well. What you can do is take this information and bake it into a map. So from the polypaint palette, uh, this is where we used to create the, the initial set of colors. We need to actually create the textures first. So let's go ahead and scroll to where it says texture map. And let's expand the create section. And you see we have this new from polypaint. So if I click on this one, Zero is going to take whatever we painted in here and it's going to turn that into a nice texture. This is what we have. And you can sort of see the arrows already in there and that sort of triangle that I created and the damage too. So this is ready to go, right? So to export this from ZBrush, I'm going to click on Clone Texture. That is going to take this texture and put it into my texture palette here. And because ZBrush likes to work in a specific way, all I need to do is click on the Flip V with this texture selected. So that is going to flip that uh, vertically, which is how uh, Painter is going to read it. And then I'm going to click on Export. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. This is just a quick check. Um, I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and click OK. So that exports this texture um, with all the custom paint that I created. This is my uh, you know, texture or, or ID map. And then I'm going to jump into Painter. And all I'm going to do is drag and drop my texture into the asset library. When you drag and drop a texture, it's going to ask you what you want to do with this. So I'm going to click on this icon, and I'm going to click on Texture so that we tell the software this is a texture map. And I'm also click on Import. Uh, by the way, the difference between these things are pretty self-explanatory. So current session is the, the current thing that we're working on. The, uh, the project is if you already saved that file or the library so that every time that you open Painter, it becomes available. But I just want to show you in this current session. So import that. So we now have it in here. This is our ID map. So what we need to do is go to the texture set settings where we have the previous ID map that I had. It's a little bit cleaner. Uh, I want to switch to the ID view here so that you can see it. So this is displaying that ID map. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drop it in here to replace this, uh, this mesh map. All right, so you see now this is exactly what we have in, uh, in ZBrush in terms of polypaint. And like I said, you can paint this in any way that you want to, add any colors that you want. Uh, you can add labels, whatever you want, as long as you have enough uh, contrast between the colors. This is going to work nicely as an ID map. All right, so that is pretty much in terms of creating your custom ID and bring it into Painter. So pretty simple stuff. 
Um, and just to show you how useful this is, what I'll do is I'm going to go back to the material mode, pressing M on my keyboard, and I'm going to go to layers. And this metal, I can go ahead and click on black mask. But instead of just clicking on black mask, I'm going to go ahead and choose black mask with color selection or add mask with color selection. So this one is going to create a black mask and it's going to add this, uh, this effect, right? And this effect allows you to choose a specific color from that ID map. This is the whole reason we created this ID map. So let's get closer here. And I'm going to click on pick color. As soon as I click pick color, it's going to display temporarily the ID map, right? And it allows you to sample the color that you want to use to display in this mask. So let's say if I want to create this sort of metal thing in this area or like the damage, I just click on this green. And you see now this section or this material, uh, even though it is part of the same object, this basically has this, uh, this mask. And of course, you can tweak this a little bit. So you can select that color selection. You can play with the tolerance. So how much of that green hue is capturing. So I'm not going to do too much, something like this. You can also play with the hardness. By default, it's set to one. You can reduce that so it's not as strong, right? Um, but you see, it is a little bit, you know, jagged in a way. Uh, and there's a, a few things that you can do. You can, for instance, add an, another effect from the magic one. So you can click on Add Filter, and we can type Blur. I'm going to use Blur here just to blur things a little bit, not too much, just enough so that we can remove that sort of jagged edges. And if you want to sharpen that, we can do this with levels. So I'm going to bring some levels, and then I'm going to crunch these values a little bit. So there are, these are very simple techniques, but you know, once you once you know how to use them, I'm pretty sure that you already have uh, in your head some ideas on how to utilize this um, this ID map. Now you can do the same thing with the other map. Let's go ahead and uh, or the other section that we created. So I'm going to do another layer. Uh, this layer is going to be I don't know blue, and I'm going to enable rough, so it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, sorry, pretty reflective, like so. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm going to click the same or repeat the same process. I'm going to click on add mask with selection. Click on pick color. And then I'm going to choose this color right here, right? Uh, you can you know, fix the edge in the same way that I just showed you. Um, in fact, we can duplicate these effects by selecting them, holding the Alt key, drag and drop them on top. And then we basically duplicated that. Maybe we need to blur this a little bit more and then contrast this even further. All right. So now we have these, uh, these separate materials. We have a metal and this sort of shiny blue plastic on top of this other plastic. And they are actually sharing the same mesh, but we are dividing the materials based on that ID map. So that's why I consider this ID map to be um, a huge thing in terms of, of setting up your materials. Um, not only that, if you select your color selection, let's say if I want to add some other parts or other sections of this, of this mask, let's say if I, I don't want to have this damage in metal, right? I can click on pick color and choose a green color. So it's going to be two different colors. They're going to share that, that color. And I can keep doing that. So uh, if I want to do, I don't know, this white, right? I can keep doing this. So any time that I pick a new color is going to apply that color to my new material. So that's it for this tip. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, it's definitely something that you can uh, practice and you'll see how important it is to have like a nice clean ID map that you can import into your projects and allow you to quickly and easily select things and apply materials, even if it is during the design process and decided whether you want to use leather over fabric or metal over plastic, whatever that case might be, um, in whatever project you're working on. So hopefully this helps and I'll see you in the next tip.